So we recently looked at one community, finished and thriving before the war, gone to absolute shit after. It's not an uncommon theme in Fallout. Today we should be looking at a mixture. It thrived, yet was not finished, and partly fell apart in the ensuing chaos after the bombs. But for a while still held together. Uh, right up until it didn't. I have mentioned it before, but here it is. West Everett Estates, located just outside Malden, where Vault 75 was located. There is a lot to take a look at here, but first, something pleasant to start off with. A corpse. So this fellow is hiding in a concrete construction pillar, I think, and has Radaway in a gun. Uh, he seems to be pre-war, and based on the Radaway, probably sought shelter here after the bombs dropped. Uh, don't think it did him too good though, as he seems to have died shortly after seeking shelter. Looking at some of the unfinished houses here, it's clear that this estate was still a work in progress. Most likely meant to imitate the success the communities also featuring the House of Tomorrow design had, such as Sanctuary Hills. How long this one had been in construction is unclear, though given that some of the houses are properly finished and had residents, it must have been several months in to maybe a few years. This house is interesting in a few ways. Firstly, it shows that as you get closer to the centre, the houses occupy states of construction further along than those on the outer edges, so they must have been built outwards. Also, it's the first time we see some of the workers here. Two of them can be found, clearly having a wee break with a few beers, chilling out, shooting the shit etc, or at least they were when they had a pulse, possibly being alcoholics, as they must have died due to the blast because no one would stand around and calmly drink after seeing that shit. Since they did die due to it, that means they were drinking at 10 in the fucking morning, with a day of dangerous tools and possibly heavy machinery operation ahead of them. They did indeed stand at the pinnacle of responsible building stuff. Located across the street to the left from that one is this wrecked hovel, where a Mark V turret respawned when I went to record this and made me jump out of my fucking skin. It seems the blast leveled this house, though since many of the other houses are still standing, the correct support may not have been in place for this one, explaining why it collapsed. Some poor fellow has died in a very, um, compromising looking position. I assume they too were involved in the construction work, and must have been looking at something on the table when they died, which explains their collapsed posture on it. Or they were doing something else. Either way, I will not judge them for it. The next house along also marks the point where the super mutant present here becomes more apparent, by which I mean they will start trying to actively kill you. The house here seems to be in a mostly finished state, though why the super mutants used it for shelter when it has no walls, I don't really know. Maybe they're kind of stupid, which I suppose in a way they are. There isn't much here, but down the back is a wall covered in bloody handprints, so maybe some of the victims were killed here, or some of the people that previously occupied this place died here. Next, let's look at this playground. It has a tree that is telling the law of gravity, politely mind you, to fuck right off, and its hovering branch supports a swing. It's odd that this place has one and Sanctuary does not. One reason is that, since this place was closer to a school, Malden, its intended market may have been families with children. This makes sense given the proximity to Malden. So of course, kids need somewhere to be little shits. A playground is the perfect place. The house beside the playground is the first finished one we come to, as it has a shit barbecue at the back. Some dead raiders can be found here as well, done away with by the super mutants most likely. We will now listen to the separated family radio signal. This has been a pre-recorded message. Message repeats in three seconds. Bonnie, honey, if you're able to hear this message, boys and I are safe at home in the bunker. I pray you're still okay. I want to be out there for you more than anything, but people here are relying on me. I can't let them down. Boys say hi, and they love you. Old Miss Chapel says hi too. I love you so much. Please, come home. So the creator of the message has a wife called Bonnie, and two sons, who are with him in a bunker he has presumably constructed, though she is somewhere else. The recording seems to be set after the bombs, and he says he can't leave as people are relying on him, so perhaps he's someone of note in their community. Also, whoever owned this house was an alcoholic. Now to look at the terminal here to get some info. So Lance Ames owned this terminal, and there are four logs, 
The first, entitled Home, is from November 8th, a few weeks after the bombs hit. They were in their cars when it happened, and it took them a while to get back. I assume he was with his brother Leon, and they planned to wall up the community. Someone called Jeanette was also with them, and their kids, but they need more help. The second one, entitled The Walls, is from December 12th, more than a month on. Someone called Wayne and helped them finish it. He had a bunker, so we can assume that he is the one that made the radio message. He also appears to have had the bunker ready for a while. The third is entitled Leon, and it appears he fucked up. Lance was with him scouting, and Leon ran up to a group of raiders because he knew one of them. From the mob? And for some reason it did not occur to him the individual in question may try and kill him. He then went full retard, which you should never go, and told them about the fort. Now they didn't kill them, but Lance felt that they would come for them. The last entry, called Look What We Have Here, shows that these were reasonable fears, as it appears they attacked the fort and took it over. They gave them the chance to leave, which they declined, and so the raiders killed them all. The he in question is either Wayne or Lance. Leon joined them out of fear, but they said they will simply use him as a shield next time they entered Boston. So Lance and Leon lived here with someone called Jeanette and some kids, though maybe not all in the same house. They planned to build a wall, and got the help of the creator of the message, Wayne, who has a bunker. Leon, however, is an idiot, and ran up to a group of raiders because he recognised one of them from the mob. The group then kills everyone in the estate later, taking control of it. Leon, being a basic bitch, joins them, but I doubt he lasted long. S sorry I hope he didn't last long. It just goes to show, one moron is all it takes to fuck up a perfectly good community. Opposite this house are more of the walls and guard posts that made this place so valuable as a settlement. Some of the destroyed houses here were probably used for parts, as no one was living in them, and repurposing or repairing them would probably be too large an undertaking. The house next door is an interesting one. Inside is not much to look at, but it doesn't look too looted. In fact, it looks lived in, with only parts of it damaged. Super mutants are in fact very considerate tenants. You know, after they have killed you. Also, DRINK! And a dead body in the shower. I'm not really sure who owns this body. Perhaps it belonged to someone who died when the raiders attacked this place. The front entrance to this community is heavily reinforced, making full use of one of the collapsed houses. It is also one of the areas where, even after it's been cleared, enemies will respawn. And this guy scared the shit out of me. I am vulnerable when I record. This was most likely built by the settlers and then used by others, so they prepared the entrance way quite well. One of the remaining diggers from the construction was used, with the corpse of its previous occupants still present, begging the question why didn't they take it out when they drove it, as moving it any other way is kind of pointless. This house is... uh... interesting? It's clear from what we find inside that a family with a small child or baby lived here, and none of their stuff was moved. But the really interesting thing is the room with the crib in it. The key to the Boston mayoral shelter can be found in here. Now since there's only one other bedroom, and we know the mayor had other kids, it's unlikely this was their house. It may be that one of the residents here was involved with the construction of the shelter, or perhaps they were part of the mob that stormed the bunker. We can see in this yard that some attempts were made to grow crops, though whether or not this was the work of the original inhabitants, I do not know. The house across the way contains the super mutant leader here, Hammer, and it's also Wayne's house. Super mutants will respawn here also. You can tell this was one of the houses where the kids lived based on all the toys, which is weird once again as it's it's literally been fucking centuries. The smash terminal is explained in the holotape you find here, Hammer's holotape. Human, did you make the machine work? human to make the machine work. We found a good place. Already has walls and water. Some human made a tiny room underground with many good things inside. Send more people so we can raid more. We give you these guns for trade. Okay, human. Make the machine stop recording now. Human! Not time for sleep! Stop bleeding and work the machine! 
So, I assume the raiders occupied here at this point. Then the super mutants took over. Hammer got one of them to record a holotape for him, and he was talking to Fist, the super mutant we encounter in Trinity Tower, to be seen in another episode. Hammer was the leader here, and saw it as a great opportunity to do more raiding, probably starting with Malden, then working their way out. They were right too, it would have been useful. In the room belonging to Wayne's two boys is a body hiding under the bed. The question is, who owns it? Well, it's too old to be one of the raiders that was present here, though, given the time gap, it's unknown how many times this place changed hands. But I think it's Wayne's, and I will get to why soon. Before we look at the bunker, we should at least mention the back area and water tower. Given that the water was a more valuable commodity, the wall surrounding here is a lot larger than some of the walls found in the rest of the settlement. Skeletons and gore can be found surrounding the water tower so the super mutants seem to have used it as a place to throw away remains, possibly using the gates to keep their hounds in. It may also be the case that the meat and gore we find here was used to feed the hounds. The last house actually does have something interesting. It seems like the super mutants were using it to cook food inside, which makes sense given its proximity to the water tower. However, the really interesting thing is this Nuka-Cola machine that was getting repaired. The person who was doing it seems to have been the process of fixing it, and even tried using Mentats to aid them in doing so, but they seem to have just stopped midway, maybe because the bombs dropped and they died. However, there is in fact another reason, but we have to go and take a look in the bunker to find out what it is. But just before we do that, one last thing. The place where the super mutants seem to have burned people and stored a lot of the food. They have dog, mole rat, and even some crisp, lean raider to cook. A perfectly balanced meal if I do say so myself. Begs the question why they bothered with the small one in the previous house. Maybe they were just being greedy. Now onto the bunker, tucked away in this little shed decorated with skulls. Well, this William was a smart one, mm-hmm. Place looks to have been, at one point, very well stocked. I'm sure we can thank the super mutants for cleaning the place out. Fucking arseholes. There's even a radiation suit, intended, I'm sure, for any expeditions out into the waste for supplies. The toilet, of course, has a plunger, which perfectly explains why everything has went to shit like it did. The bunks for the two boys are present here also, with the Django's the Moon Monkey as well, if you're into that sort of thing. I assume this pipe was a source of fresh water way and sorted, most likely coming from the water tower, and while the job looks rough, it lasted all this time. The signal was coming from the radio here, still going after several centuries. Now to take a look at the terminal. There are four logs and a hall tape here. The first log is a few days after the bombs hit. It seems Wayne worked at Medtech, another place we have to look at, and that Medtech got advanced warning for the bombs. He then took off to Malden to get his kids, and they didn't enter the vault even though they would be eligible to do so. Which is weird as the parents didn't know they would be separated from the kids, so maybe Medtech knew something about the vault that everybody else didn't, and as a result, Wayne found out. They got to the bunker, and they can hear gunfire, the looting and rioting most likely. His wife Bonnie, who we will look at in another video, is trapped out there. The second log is Wayne worrying about his wife. He can't go to the hospital and leave the boys alone, due to the danger and fighting in Boston, and one of the boys, the oldest Michael, knows he's talking shit when he says she's coming back. The third entry details his plans about the water tower, which explains why it was so slapstick. It was put together after the bombs. The Nuka-Cola machine is also explained. It belonged to the now partially ghoulified Ron who tried to kill him in pretty cold blood, but Lance Ame saved him, shooting Ron from Wayne's roof. If the house across the way was the same one Ron was in, I assume Cobb was either his brother, father, or boyfriend. So, essentially I have no fucking idea who Cobb was. The last entry is where the inconsistencies start. It's Bonnie's birthday, and the boys made her a birthday cake, which is pretty depressing. Then it talks about the plan to put up the wall, and how long it took them to put it up. The thing is, uh, Lance said in his logs, the wall was finished with Wayne's help in December, but Wayne wasn't saved by him until the following month. I'm on to you Bethesda, you and your fucking mind games. They hotwired some trucks to make the majority of the wall, and the rest took a month, which throws off Lance's timeline even more. The last thing to see is David, the youngest child's, holotape. Grab our 
our stuff. No! I have to leave a note for Mama so she can find us. Stop it! Boys, come on. We're leaving. Now. Hold it! I have to get Jangles! Michael, grab your brother. There's no time. They'll be back any second. Jesus. Props off to that voice actor. That was fucking harrowing. That, that made me genuinely uncomfortable to hear. Also, I don't think he ever got Mr. Jangles. Probably for the best, to be honest. The raiders came back. Most likely not the first attack by the group Leon alerted. And this time they won. They killed Lance. And I assume everyone else. Since this was the time they actually took it over. I think Wayne's kids got away. Or were killed. I'm not sure. And then Wayne separated from them or going mad with grief. Went somewhere familiar. He went to his old house. Which for some reason they no longer lived in. And then he crawled onto the bunk beds of his boys. And died. West Everett Estates. Another community trying to emulate the homes of tomorrow, possibly geared more towards children. The houses in the furthest part of the community were never finished, and several construction workers can still be found here, where the blast took their lives. It is interesting to note that, based on Wayne's terminal entries, a lot of people still survived in the city and surrounding area. A lot more than what I would have thought anyway. Wayne was smart, and he built a bunker, though his wife Bonnie never made it inside. He, and the boys, survived off their supplies, and by tapping into the water supply of the tower. At some point, they made the distress signal. Eventually, Wayne went into the house across the road, and a partially ghoulified Ron tried to kill him, like an asshole. However, Lance Ame saved him. Lance, his wife and family, and his brother Leon had returned home after travelling for weeks. They hatched a plan to build a wall around the community, and using tires, leftover supplies and trucks, they did and they were safe. Then Leon ran up to a group of raiders and told them about it, like a fucking moron. At some point they attacked the settlement, and eventually overran it. The last moments were captured by young David's hull tape, still clinging onto the hope of seeing his mother again. The settlement is now in the hands of Hammer, a super mutant that is either an underling or an ally of Fist, the Trinity Tower super mutant. They want to use the settlement as a place to raid and spread their influence. To us, however, it's a lesson. A strong settlement with good people was once here. They travelled far, and fought hard, to make something of their own. To keep their family safe. It just goes to show you, all it takes is one fucking moron to turn an entire settlement completely tits up. settlement with so much potential, and heartbreak, and how it was all brought down by one idiot. I hoped you'd like this look at it. If you did like it, give the video a like, and if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go on to my subreddit so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon. I ask for only a dollar or a quid, no more or less. If you have any suggestions for rewards that you want to see, please tell me. Also, have a gander at the ones I currently have. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates, or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at nthapple.business at gmail.com, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. It's linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.